All right, Robert, how long does it take to save $81,990? Well, at $9,000 a month, it takes uh, nine months, but at half that a much a month, it takes twice as long. And for well, most for people, it'll probably be 1000 a month. And for some people, it takes a whole lifetime to save that. And on this episode of Real Estate Chat with... Jonder Perez. And Robert Ede, we're going to find out what happens if you cannot close on a pre-construction, whether it's a condo or freehold, whatever you buy pre-construction, you've saved up your life savings for the deposit, then you lose it. You lose it all. And this is a story that we read in the CBC. And let me load it up in a moment here. There we go. A wave of defaults has real estate lawyers urging pre-sale buyers to be cautious. And on Real Estate Chat, we've which you like and have subscribed to, You've heard Robert and I talk about the caution that we would like you to take when you're considering buying pre-sale, pre-construction, whether it's condos or freeholds or whatever. And we're going to BC for this because one BC man lost his $82,000 deposit, $81,990, despite a contract option to transfer to another buyer. So Real Estate Chat viewers, we will link to this article. There's a lot of details here. Um, this is the poor gentleman here. Um, he's from India. He relied on selling his home in India in order for him to be able to purchase this home. He put down $81,990 back in 2021, it doesn't say when in 2021, to buy a new townhouse in the complex here in South Surrey, British Columbia. His name is Sudeep Segal. And then because he couldn't sell due to you know, the real estate market shifting and whatnot, I mean, this affects globally, not just where we're at. Because he couldn't sell his home, he was not able to close on this. Now, here's a twist, Robert. This particular contract had an assignment clause, which basically, and I'm going to paraphrase here because I can't. Oh, well, there it is. It has an assignment clause. It says the builder shall not unreasonably deny an assignment. So in case you know, some, some, we'll call them speculators, I guess, some speculators who buy pre-construction projects, uh, tend to write on the assignment opportunity and want to assign prior to completion here this gentleman genuinely wanted to assign his purchase because he could not afford to close it due to the lack of or due to the inability to sell and you'll read here comments from lawyers comments from industry professionals but robert i mean we feel for this gentleman i mean hardworking man trying to set up in canada trying to get his family set loses $81,990. What do real estate chat viewers need to learn from this experience? Okay, let's say we wanna make everybody mad at us because we tell the brutal truth. Everybody who's in the real estate business knows when a purchaser says to you they wanna sell a property in their home country and that's how they're gonna fund their purchase. You don't pay any attention to them because they are never going to sell it because every other country except for Canada does not have the same ideal property standards, registration system, and ability to sell a property that we have here. So you know that they're lying. They just want to go look at houses. You don't bother with it. You say, when you sell that property, call me back. When you get a commitment for a first mortgage, call me back. Now, in this particular story with this bleeding heart tree hugger CBC reporter, if you look at her bio, she did not ask him if at the time of signing the contract that he had a pre-commitment from any lender to provide him with the balance of the of the um, the purchase price. Let's say that the deposit was 10% for uh, whatever it is, $90,000. So it's still like a fairly price, uh, pricey property. Did he have a commitment for the balance? Uh, living in the accommodation that he had, I don't believe he was qualified then. He was not qualified now. And so people, just like at the Landlord and Tenant Bureau, they lie. And when they tell a story to a reporter, they tell only the parts that reinforce their case, and they omit the parts that would dismiss it completely. Now, in this case, half the story about the not reasonably deny the assignment is also missing. The Story admits that he found a purchaser who was willing to take over. Now, that means that the uh, builder looked at this prospective buyer to take this gent out of the mess and didn't think they could close either. We didn't hear anything about the, the viability of the purchaser coming in. And so this is half a story. He thinks he has a lawyer who will give them a, a, a sob story to go into court and claim some of that money back, which he borrowed from his aged 
parents in India. Now, I don't care whether they're from India or from Somalia. He borrowed the deposit. He lost it because it was a spec deal. He thought he could flip it. All this time he watched. He had the fear of missing out. He said, oh, it's 2021. We don't know what whether it was December or whether it was January. It makes a little bit of difference whether it was the beginning or the end. But if he, if he bought it at the peak because he was afraid of missing out on the real estate boom and he was wrong, then he's just a speck. He wanted to flip it. He was never going to move in there. And uh, it's a very sad story that not is being not completely told. Now, the other side of it, which you asked, is what should we tell real estate chat viewers about pre-sales. Well, you buy a pre-sale because you think you're gaining a financial advantage in between the time when you buy it and the time when it's finished. You're hoping that the price appreciation will go up and you're hoping that by putting down the deposit, in Toronto sometimes it's 20%, um, you will hold that 100% interest in that property for the whole period of time, be it three years, five years, seven years, nine years, until it's completed, at which time? Maybe you'll win the lottery. Maybe you'll get the proceeds from an estate. Maybe, maybe, maybe you'll have a whole lot more money or a better job or something or other so that you will be able to come up with the rest of the money on the five, seven years down the road completion date and realize your dream. And you'll be able to tie it up. There's no cost. There's no interest. There's no tenant. There's no nothing in that interim period. So in that way, it's good. And from the period from what? 2000 till 20. 13, it was a very good deal and people made money flipping them because you could buy it, you could tie it up, you could sell it through an assignment or maybe you close the deal and 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 you sold it to somebody else and you would make a huge amount of money. They didn't have any concerns that they now must have about HST responsibility. They didn't have any... CRA was not bothering you about the money. You would go from the developer A to customer C and you in the middle, you just take your profit and there's no tax on it, no nothing. Now they're clamping down on that like crazy. So the whole market changed completely. Plus, if you were buying something for, let's say 90% of its current market value and it was going to be sold seven years, the final closing would be in seven years, there's a very good chance that you'll get that 10% appreciation because you bought it for under market. But if you're paying for 20% over what it's worth today, there's very little chance ever that you'll get it at the other end. So supply and demand, supply and demand, greed. Well, I mean, okay, so I'm going to make Robert hate me. Robert, let's say let's say this man was genuinely, you know, I mean, there's, okay, with any That's of these... That's a big guess. That's a big assumption. There's too many things okay, that so to the contrary. Be fair, to be fair, on both sides, yeah. these articles, yes, they glorify the story that they want to say. And right. I, I usually go on the side of, hey, give the man a benefit of the doubt that he wanted to bring his family. He loves Canada. He wants to leave his home country to establish their place here. The interesting thing apart about this too is this. There's a Toronto condo lawyer that's mentioned here and they're saying people are better off buying something they can touch and feel. In the past episodes of our Real Estate Chat, one of the things I said to you, Robert, is that at one point, everything was a pre-construction. Now, you mentioned the fact that there was an era, I guess a golden era of time, where you could buy a pre-con and actually make money off of it, I guess, because the appreciation and, you know, the, the takeoff of prices were accelerating faster than the developers caught on. Today, like, should a real estate shed viewer who's not a speculator, who's not a real estate hater, but wants to genuinely establish for themselves a home, like what would prompt them to, hey, I want to buy a pre-con because I, I want something new. I love the new car smell, the new condo smell. Yep. Nobody ever used this toilet before. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, so what, like there are people who specialize in pre-construction. There's even within our organization, there's people that used to be doing commercial deals all the time and now they're just strictly doing pre-cons then they take us take possession of them and then the uh they become property manager for uh, the hundreds of people that buy the condo now so if you're right now today then you look for a project that is an ad, 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 at an advantageous price meaning it is not asking you to pay 1300 dollars a square foot for something you can buy in the resale market for 900 now the 900 one will be used it will not have that smell but as that lawyer who said, you can touch it, you can feel it, you can go in it, you can walk around it. 
you'll know what you're getting. It'll be an established condominium corporation. There, you know, there'll be no high volume maintenance fee, low volume maintenance fee, nothing. Now, there are still very good condos being put up, but unless the price that you're paying for today, let's pick these same numbers, nine hundred dollars a square foot, is below what you can buy a resale for, then you're going to lose money on that. You can sit on it for five years and Let's say that the Bank of Canada is wrong, which probably they are, and inflation comes back and all the prices go whooshing, even this year, in anticipation of interest rates coming down. They're going to come down half a point. Everybody thinks they're going to come down 2%. They're doing the math. However, if prices go whooshing, then maybe you'll think you made money. But again, you're not closing it in one year or two years. You're closing it in five years. So a lot of things can happen in five years. So examine your investment criteria. Examine what your real objective is. Are you trying to buy something that you really can't afford, but you have barely enough down payment and you're going to fudge on the mortgage commitment and they're going to sell it to you because they want to have your money in their account rather than your account because they know that the contract is written in their favor. And if you can't come up with the money on the end, then they win anyway. So do I like pre-con uh, sales? Um, a little, but not much. You're basically saying, hey, someone else can take the risk. And if they make money, great. In, in this market, they won't make money. And if they lose their deposits, the builder wins. The builder takes a deposit. They end up selling the unit to somebody else. Who knows if they end up paying the same or less. The builder is probably not going to settle for less. But hey, when that when that hits the resale. And mind you, Robert, you talked about the, the condition of some of these uh, pre-construction condos that are being built. Like just the sheer size, the layout, the... I guess the way builders are trying to shave as much money off so that some of these layouts are ridiculous. Like it looks like they, for the sake of the floor plate, packing in as many units as possible. Some of them look like hallways. I like got some of these units. Yeah, there was a time when having a, uh, I said, yeah, in that very uncharacteristic way, uh, a, a hotel room converted into a condo, like it's really just a big studio, was was frowned on by snooty guys like me. And now that's not bad. Because there's others that are just so terrible. You're right. 300 square foot is not a home. It's it's a it's a studio for the weekend. It's a pied de terre. It's a it's a student housing. It's a, I don't know what. But well, that's not, yeah. you know, it's a business. It's a business of redevelopment of the land and the cost of the land and the cost of construction and the demands on the return because these guys are borrowing the money often from somebody else. The mezzanine financing that they're borrowing in between the time the shovel goes in the ground and when they can get permanent financing when they've got 70% sold is very expensive money. So they want to make sure they can pay for that money and have their same return. They want a hundred percent return on the land that they bought per year. And that's just the way it works. So it's expensive land, it's expensive development, it's expensive. And the thing that I've glossed over before, every word of the contract, which you cannot really alter, is written by your adversary. Do you ever want to do that? No. Only if you find that it's an advantageous thing that there just can't go anything wrong, you're going to have that lakefront wonderful. I mean, anyway, it's, it's the wrong time, it's the wrong part of the cycle to be buying something that's not even built yet. Oh, be smart about it. And if you are getting into it and understand what you're facing against your adversary, in Robert's word, Ed, stay tuned for future episodes of Real Estate Chat because we will be talking about micro units and some of the issues that some owners of those micro units who were investors at the time, speculators, are now facing. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Estate Chat. Remember, do the right thing for you. Do your research. Talk to real estate brokers. Talk to lawyers. Consult with your family before making such decisions and make the right choice. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Estate Chat. Take care and bye for now. See you later.